Ukrainian drones attacked an aircraft plant in Tatarstan where Tu-22M and Tu-160M are produced. On the morning of April the 17th, drones of the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine attacked the aircraft plant named after Gobunov in Kazan of Tatarstan. Tu-22M and Tu-160M bombers are produced and repaired there. Sources in the special services told Unayan about this. Explosions on the territory of the aircraft plant occurred at about 10 a.m. in Kyiv. Before the explosions, an air raid siren sounded in the area of the Kazan aircraft plant. At the same time, the evacuation of personnel from the territory of the enterprise began. During the attack, airports in Kazan, Niznekamsk and Nizhny Novgorod were closed. The network was filled with news and footage of explosions near the plant. Russian air defences downed two Ukrainian drones over the republics of Mordovia and Tatarstan on the morning of April the 17th, the Russian Defence Ministry claimed. According to the ministry, one drone was shot down over Tatarstan and another one over neighbouring Mordovia, some 700 kilometres from the Ukrainian border. Artem Dzunov who heads the Moldovia Republic, said on Telegram that a drone targeted a facility in the region. Law enforcement authorities at the site are carrying out the necessary measures, he added. Russia's Federal Air Transport Agency said that restrictions had been imposed on the departure and arrival of planes at the airports of Nizhny Novgorod, Kazan and Niznekamsk to ensure the safety of civilian aircraft. Ukrainian officials usually do not comment on these statements. Ukrainian force struck with drones, industrial facilities in Tatarstan's Yelabuga and Niznekamsk on April the 2nd. A source in Ukraine's military intelligence agency told the Kyiv Independent, which marked one of the deepest attacks on the Russian territory since the start of the full-scale war. Yelabuga lies some 1,300 kilometers away from the Ukrainian border. The target reportedly was a manufacturing facility for the Shahed type attack drones, which Russia regularly uses in attacks against Ukraine, including those targeting civilian and energy infrastructure. In recent weeks and months, Russian authorities have reported an increasing number of drone strikes targeting Belgorod, Bryansk, Kursk, and Leningrad oblasts, as well as other regions. Security of 1 billion at risk because of Russia, NATO reveals details. The security of nearly 1 billion people in Europe and North America is at risk from Russia's attempts to attack major vulnerabilities in undersea infrastructure, including wind farms, pipelines, and power cables, according to Vice Admiral Didier Maleter, Deputy Commander of NATO's Allied Maritime Command, according to RBC Ukraine. According to him, the network of submarine cables and pipes on which Europe's power supply and communications depend was not built to withstand the hybrid warfare waged by Moscow and other NATO opponents. We know that Russians have developed a lot of hybrid warfare under the sea to disrupt the European economy through cables, internet cables, pipelines. All of our economy under the sea is under threat. And to be very clear, we know what Russians have developed as far as nuclear submarines to operate under the sea. So we are not naive and NATO countries are working together. Maleter says, the comments come after two incidents involving alleged sabotage of gas pipelines in the Baltic region in the last 18 months, first at Nord Stream 1 and 2 in September 2022, and then at Balti Connector last October, despite extensive investigations by several states. Both cases remain unsolved, although Finland said in December that everything indicated a Chinese vessel deliberately anchored the Balti Connector, Maleter notes that the situation has changed dramatically since much of the current infrastructure was first built by the private sector, making it extremely vulnerable. The companies responsible for them didn't know that such hybrid warfare would develop so rapidly. More than 90% of the internet is under the sea. All our links between the US, Canada and Europe are transmitting under the sea, so there are a lot of vulnerabilities, he said. Despite the growing role of offshore wind power in meeting climate goals, the infrastructure still has system vulnerabilities, he says. That's a very important concern because it's a security issue for nearly 1 billion NATO nation civilians. We need to be protected and well supplied by our vital undersea infrastructures, the deputy commander emphasizes.